Welcome to the Balanced Ambition Podcast. I'm your host, Matt Southam. Here, we delve into candid conversations with entrepreneurs, exploring both their business journey and their secrets to maintaining mental well-being. As we navigate the balance of ambition and inner peace, I hope you find insights, inspiration and invaluable takeaways in every episode. Thank you for joining us. Dan, welcome to the show today. I want to start by asking you why in 2024, as we are now, you feel podcasting is so important because I know you've got a bit of a take on this. Well, great question. Great question to start. And it's uh, firstly, wonderful to be here, Matt. Thank you so much for inviting me onto your show. Um, Great to meet you in person. Um, So we've put together actually um, 40, not just not one, not two, not three, but 47 reasons (laughs) why (laughs) your brand (laughs) needs a podcast in 2024, which uh, we've just published, just published on our website. It's available to download now. And um, and uh, I was I, it was going to be way too early for a plug then. I was going to give the plug of the website, but that's, <laughs> I was like, way, way no, too that's, early. That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> um, Listen to yeah, the episode for... first, then go and download it. Yeah, <laughs> exactly, exactly. Uh, no, 40, 47 reasons, because there are so many reasons why uh, brands should have podcasts in 2024. And if you're not a brand, as an individual, I think it's, uh, it's a great exercise to do anyway for your own personal brand, because obviously we know how important uh, that is uh, today. So I won't go through all 40. Um, but I'll talk to you about three of the main personas, if you like, of people that uh, okay. come to us uh, for podcasts and why it's important to them and become an integral part of their brand strategy in 2024. And the first one is, of course, the enhanced brand visibility that it gives you. So, um, you know, we deal with marketing managers, marketing directors of of organizations of, of all sizes, essentially, that are looking to really, you know, elevate their brand and humanize their brand and tell authentic mm-hmm. stories that perhaps, you know, they find difficult to talk about when it comes to, um, you know, let's call it more contrived marketing. So if you're thinking about your kind of out of home or your digital marketing uh, presence or your ads, then of course, there's a lot of time effort, quite rightly, that goes into curating those and uh, and getting them right and lots of audience research uh, to see what people people are going to respond to. But nothing yeah. really uh, talks about, you know, a uh, nothing really beats a podcast for sharing authentic stories with your own tone of voice or people within your organization and their, and, and, and having their tone of voice uh, talked about on their on their podcast. Or of course, sharing stories from happy clients and happy customers and getting them to yeah. share what their experience has been like uh, working with you. So that, that becomes really important uh, when, you know, marketing... Uh, uh, teams are looking to use podcasts as part of, um, you know, their their own business development strategy and and kind of you know letting their customers know what it, what they can expect when they start working with their organisation. So that's, that's that's the first one, and I guess that ties in with you know number two as well that we we've got on the list here, which is personal uh, connection uh, with the audience. Uh, of course, it's it's much more uh, intimate to to share these stories, as I'm sure your listeners uh, will tell you, Matt, all, all the time. You know. So when you're you know driving along and people get to catch up with their own favorite uh, podcast, just like you would you know your breakfast show in the morning when you listen to the radio or the drive time show, it's like a it's like a you know yeah. personal friend. And podcasts are something that you know people can look forward to. Or you know if you're on a train and you've kind of got you know the uh, the you know the headphones in your ears and you kind of can get lost, truly get lost in in podcasts and and listen to those authentic stories. And you're much more likely to buy into to that. Pers- that that brand based on the the voices that you hear um so the the second uh persona of person that we have come in quite often um to the podcast guys are um are communications managers internal communications managers uh, generally who um look to podcasting as a great way to interact with their internal teams so for example we run a podcast uh, for the body shop that has 80,000 uh, partners and, uh, and 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 employees globally um, and they were looking for a brand new way of communicating with their employees that kind of went above the usual town halls uh, that they used yeah. to have which is obviously as you'd imagine quite top down quite top heavy the ceo is 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 obviously talking to uh, the team on a, on a on kind of a one-way street really the 
there's not many yeah. uh, not, not much time for for, for questions um, so they they put these podcasts together in order to improve the communication it's not it's not presented by the CEO or in fact anyone on the C-suite it's actually presented by uh, you know individuals uh, within the team and they hear voices of people that are, are working in the warehouse from people that are working in you know the stores and and head office and people that are actually going out and doing um you know home parties and all that kind of stuff so it's real people that you know again resonates with the audience that they've got those eighty thousand employees and partners globally that uh, people can relate to and that's you know it's all about the relatability so more and more clients in 2024 if they're not using podcasting for external marketing purposes the likelihood is they uh, will be using it for internal communication purposes and if they're not they should um and yeah. then the third persona the third persona that we we've come across and, and worked on over the past sort of three and a half years that, that that we've been in business is for learning and development so for example we work with um mm. st james's place we've worked with st james's place now for for about two and a half years and we started off working on internal learning and development podcasts for them and i think i would argue that they have probably one of the most forward thinking uh, one of the the uh, the most advanced learning and development one of the most advanced learning and development, uh, you know, uh, teams within the industry, certainly that I've met anyway. And, um, you know, they've got financial advisors. Um, they're a financial services company for those that, that aren't aware, but they've got financial advisors spread across the country and they need to keep them up to date on, you know, trends, changes uh, to legislation um, and new products and services that they've got. And, uh, you know, if you think back, you know, 10, 15 years ago, the best way to do that would be to kind of get everyone together, a great expense, pull everyone into one, yeah. one place and then do that you know, training over over a couple of days. That obviously changed into, you know, webinars. But, you know, I think since COVID, everyone kind of got that webinar fatigue. Uh, and <laughs> yeah. uh, I, I would challenge anyone that's, uh, that's ever been on a webinar recently to tell me honestly, look me in the eyes, tell me honestly that you weren't uh, working on something else while you were watching that webinar. Um, and, yeah. and podcast, again, was just, a, a, you know, a, a new, innovative, forward-thinking, um, you know, way of them sharing the information they needed to get across across to these financial services practitioners whilst they're driving, you know, whilst they're in the car on the way to the next appointment. They spend so much time in the car. And this is a great way, again, of just maximizing what would otherwise be, you know, dead time to them, essentially. Yeah. So it was really, really uh, powerful. And that obviously led, led them then uh, to think about podcasting uh, from, for, for an external marketing purpose, again, to promote their L&D team. So we run an external podcast uh, for them now. But uh, yeah, started with L&D. So there's your three really big personas, and there's 47 reasons uh, why those three personas uh, should uh, be uh, be th considering a podcast for 2024 20, if they're not already. And, and that is your marketing managers, marketing directors, heads of marketing, your internal communication managers, heads of internal communication, and your learning and development managers, heads of learning and development. Yeah, that that's some really key key points in there. One thing I've really loved that you said was about being authentic and that certainly helps brands and uh, whether it's personal brands or larger companies that actually we just see the very polished marketing material. Obviously my background is marketing. So, you know, our aim is to make everything look brilliant. Um, and yeah. a podcast can actually enhance that, but in a more authentic way, a more personal way and allow you to actually you know, the audience to, to feel connected to you rather than just you talking to them. It's uh, that it humanizes the conversation. It. Yeah. Yeah. It humanizes it, you know, and, and, and that's the thing. I think people are far more in tune to when you're being marketed to now. And, um, mm. and, and, and let's face it, nobody likes being sold to, right? So, right. um, and, right. and, and, and a podcast, you know, if some, if somebody comes to us and it does happen occasionally and they say, we absolutely want to make this podcast uh, as a sales tool and uh, we want to just, you know, sell products on it or, you know, sell ourselves on it. Uh, you know, I, I do, I do spend a lot of time with them really uh, trying to discourage them from it being just, a, you know, a, a, a 60 minute sales pitch because no one wants yeah. to listen to that. And, and it I, wouldn't cut I, through, through the audience. Um, and, and we wouldn't produce something like that because it's just not fair to the audience. Um, so, you know, just by, you know, sharing those authentic stories, 
you know, building relatable content, humanizing, you know, what, what you're saying by association of your, your brand telling those stories and actually, you know, playing to somebody's pain point that they may have will, will yeah. put your brand front and center anyway of, of, of uh, you know, when they come to make a decision about who's going to help them solve the problem that they've got, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's just it's about building trust. You know, that's one of one of the best things of people actually getting to know you on a slightly more personal level. I mean, there's lots of whether it's celebrities or influencers or just people we follow on social media that we almost feel like we know, although we don't know yeah. them. And uh, so it's true. just from telling those stories, isn't it? And, and podcasting so true. is a fantastic way way to do it. Yeah, so exactly. Take, take, I mean, go on, go on, carry on. Exactly. And it takes time, right? So, you know, some mm. of the um, best branded podcasts that uh, that we've ever produced and, and, and that I know have been produced for, for, for brands previously, you know, it can take sort of six months upwards for people to actually, you know, achieve the objective that they set out to achieve. So whether that is to improve employee engagement or whether it is to, um, you know, to see, to see a marked change in behaviors when it comes to learning and development, or whether it is to get that first inquiry through as a result of your podcast, it can take, you know, upwards of, of six months and perseverance is the key. And, I, and a lot of people that, you know, choose to start a podcast and, and, and I, I, I primarily say individuals uh, when it, when it comes to, to this is, you know, they'll, they'll record a couple of shows. They'll, they'll come with great enthusiasm and, uh, you know, lots of, lots of ideas that probably gets them to the first two episodes and they, they, they record it, you know, really enthusiastically and, you know, maybe take an editing course and edit it themselves and then put it out there. And then they just expect everyone to listen to it. And suddenly they get 12 listeners and yeah. they're super disheartened, super disheartened. And, um, then they'll realize actually, I've run out of ideas for content now after two episodes, two or three episodes. And they realize that it's actually hard to, to keep a, a show running for, for, for so long. But, you know, nothing comes easy, right? So if, no. if, they, if they persevere and push themselves, you know, they will, prob they will start seeing those numbers steadily increase. And of course, you know, perseverance pays. So what we see, and I've seen it with individual podcasters as well, that we don't necessarily produce is, you know, after six months, 12 months, they will start seeing some results. And we see it with YouTubers, right? Some people think yeah. um, that, 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 that some of the biggest YouTubers out there are overnight successes. And, you know, it's easy to feel a little bit like, you know, I, 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 I know people feel a bit jealous sometimes that, you know, these people have got, you know, hundreds of thousands of, of subscribers on, on YouTube or, or millions of subscribers and you know they feel like how do they do it how do they do it? why can't i do it why can't i cut through the noise and you know the answer is pretty much time and time again you know it's hard work determination and uh consistency and 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 you know some of these people that are absolutely you know killing it on youtube have been doing it 10 years you know yeah and only in it's only recently they've been discovered and have got the subscribers yeah, completely. I very much believe in that. There's a lot of talk of people say overnight success, but what they actually mean is it's only now you're paying attention. You know, they've actually been yeah. doing it for five, six, seven years and no Definitely. one noticed. Um, and, and that's where I think with something like this, I mean, my goal with the podcast is a hundred episodes and then, um, I, you know, we'll, we'll decide what I'm going to do then. And I, I hope I sure. want to continue it, but I'm, I'm, disciplined to do 100 episodes um so one a week is going to take two years um but that's my goal because if i'd just gone oh, i'm gonna you know create a podcast and once everyone likes it i'm sure it'll give me the motivation to go no because i won't receive that motivation from those external factors i need the discipline myself to keep it going yeah. and that's to hit my goal of, of, of 100 podcasts Absolutely. And you've committed to that number. And, you know, I'm sure there's, there's high points and low points along the way. And you, you, you know, certainly in the beginning, you may have been there thinking, oh, why am I doing this? You know, why am I doing this? But, <laughs> you know, but I'm sure now, and, and by the way, I'm honored to be one of your, you know, 100, uh, you know, interviewees on, on the podcast. So thank you. Thank you very much. Nice. Um, but, you know, but you know, you know, you, you're 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 getting out there. You're you're speaking to people. You're building relationships. You're building networks. And and if even if something doesn't come back in, you know, the first 25, 50 episodes, you know, it won't be long through all of those new people that you've met. You know, we've already had a, a you know connection this morning, and you know, we're going to have a follow up conversation after after this podcast. And you know, that's the thing, isn't it? You know, that you're using it, you know, to build your network 
grow your portfolio, get people to see what a nice guy you are as well, hear what a nice guy you are. <laughs> and actually, you know, we're going to, and, and th there's, a, there's a conversation that's going to happen that's going to take place after this podcast recording that wouldn't have happened unless, no. you know, the podcast was there, right? So, no, because otherwise I'm just another, another cold sales call if I was trying to, you know, connect with you. But actually, this is exactly. a, a great way to connect on a really authentic way because it's an interesting conversation. It's one that I want to have, uh, one that I think my listeners will be interested in. And therefore, like I say, authenticity. It's the the absolute powerhouse that I think of creating a personal brand. So how did you how did you come into producing podcasts? What's your background? Take Take me back a little bit. So I started my first podcast way before it was fashionable uh, back in 2007. So it wasn't really called podcasting back then. It was called blog talking. Um, and so I started my first <laughs> blog talk uh, back in, in 2007. And um, it was very much a hobby for me, very much a hobby. I used to lock myself away on a Saturday to produce the show. And then I recorded it on a Sunday. It actually went out live as well uh, as a blog talk. Um, and uh, and it was it was great. So I used to take uh, this was before phone jack, I believe it or not. And uh, so I used to take oh, wow. those those emails that used to come into your your inbox that promised you a trillion dollars that was waiting for you in a trunk box somewhere, <laughs> you know, on the Ivory Coast or something like that. And and I used to find the ones with phone numbers. And I used to phone them up and uh, and I used to take them on this journey, you know, before they could have any chance of scamming me. You know, they 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 used to have to kind of dance to my tune, really. And that took yeah. various forms, whether it be, you know, uh, I was the kind of Simon Cowell equivalent of, of, of you know, whatever country's got talent that they, that they were yeah. in and I was looking for for the next bit of uh, the, the next bit of talent um or you know whether I was uh playing the role of some you know elderly frail gentleman that uh they thought they had on the hook that you know had you know a million pounds to, for somebody to inherit and I wanted to you know play this game of of a game show of somebody actually you know would you know convincing me that they deserve it um and and I, but it was really to exploit, you know, how far these people would go, and uh, and and how low they would go, really, when they could hear, you know, a vulnerable person on the phone, or or even if they had this kind of flamboyant kind of, you know, uh, game show type judge uh, there, they, they, the the depths that they would go to try and get money from you, um, and it was it was great fun, and in fact, you know, I, I had a, a very big lo large loyal following in america actually um but it was hard work it was hard work to produce i did it for two years and i and i'm not kidding i used to spend like most of my saturdays producing this show to make it sound as good as possible on the sunday uh, yeah. bear in mind 2007 the tech wasn't as good as it is today it didn't you know if i listen back to it now i cringe at the quality i'm just like the quality is awful uh, <laughs> i just wouldn't go anywhere, anywhere near that but um but but you know it it was consistency that paid off. And, you know, I look back at the stats a couple of years ago and we're well over a hundred thousand, you know, downloads, um, you know, for, for that, for that series, which was massive for, for back huge. then. Yeah. For back then, you know, and, but it did, it did uh, take a lot of time. And one thing I found was, you know, scammers are probably, you know, probably one of the most unreliable people in the world. So they never, they never answered the phone when you wanted them to answer the phone. So there was lots of pre-recording <laughs> and, uh, and then even if you made a date and a time with them, you know, they probably wouldn't turn up. So it was, it was really tough. So then I, I decided, okay, I, I will go and just do, I, I love broadcasting. I love producing. And I went and did some hospital radio for a little while um, and spent three, three, four, four years at, uh, at, at a hospital radio station. I joined the committee there. I was involved with like all the fundraising activity um, and, and in, in the running of the station. And it was one of the most forward thinking radio stations, hospital radio stations at the time, because if you know people yeah. will conjure up an idea of hospital radio at this particular moment in time, and uh, we we were, I think the average age was something like thirty, um, and uh, you know we were very very forward thinking. We had the best kit, you know, would, 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 would rival most independent local radio stations, um, and we had a great team of people that you know were creative, and that gave me my creative uh, release outside of my day job, which was really growing my corporate career. Um, and I was working for FedEx at the time. I spent seven and a half years at, at FedEx Express, um, working my way up the career ladder in sales uh, and marketing. And I ended up being uh, the global sales manager, running one of the biggest accounts they had in the world there th throughout my career in, in seven and a half years, which was great. And I wouldn't change that for the world because, you know, um, 
I think being active in the corporate world and, and building my corporate network has stood us in good stead for the podcast guys, which is very much focused on branded podcast production for, for corporates, yeah. large corporates and enterprise essentially. Um, but the, 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 the broadcasting side always gave me that creative release. And uh, at the weekend, you know, it was something I could kind of step away from the day to day work and just lose myself in a show that I was making or producing and presenting and uh, and then get back into the corporate world the next day and it gave me yeah. great you know food for you know uh, talking points and discussions uh, during during my week um and then I did some other local radio stuff and um and I did that all along my uh, corporate career I I got out of FedEx and went into marketing agencies so I could really see you know how marketing activity worked for large organizations uh, and brands um and I, I i moved to a couple of organizations there headhunted a few times and then 2020 happened of course pandemic yeah. happened and pretty much <laughs> you know all the work that we were doing on events conferences exhibitions um anything you know out of home essentially went away it stopped and you know we had yeah. to make our, half the my workforce redundant i was like look i just need to take control of my own destiny here and you know because of all those events, conferences, exhibitions, uh, and traditional marketing methods going away, places that those brands and 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 uh, and, and organisations would usually go to to tell their stories and you know and, and meet people just weren't available anymore. I thought you know maybe now's the time to turn this hobby into a business for the first time ever and yeah. and actually focus on that market that you know is a bit voiceless right now if they don't have a podcast and help them start a podcast but do it properly and do it right and you know taking all of that experience i've got from the production world and 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 creating shows for myself and content for myself and combining that with my my corporate experience and knowing what the, what it is those marketing directors learning and development directors internal communication directors wanted that's yeah. that's been the secret source really and it's grown from there um since september 2020 I mean, yeah, and that has been quite a growth. And obviously, uh, podcasts have boomed in, in recent years and any sort of online, um, I guess, content delivery, whether it's, you know, short form video or podcasts and, and a lot of that. I think the way we consume content has, has changed and and probably, you know, the, that, that 2020 COVID year has accelerated that quite, quite likely. How did it go? I mean, what was it like launching a business during the, the most sort of unstable time um that we've probably ever encountered yeah it was scary right i mean it, you know i i would rather be doing something than um taking the the furlough option and sitting around and watching netflix and waiting for the world to open back up and and i think that was the key thing for me is that i need to see i need to see this as an opportunity an opportunity to actually do something that you know, for, for the long term, because, you know, you know what it was like back in COVID time. We had no idea how long this was going to last, right? No. You know, there, there, there was, I, I think when it initially came out, I was like, oh, it'd be all right, it'd be done in a few weeks. And then it took <laughs> yeah. a few months. And I'm like, this is bizarre. And I literally, I'm not one to just sit around at home. And I was like, I've really got to do something here. And I had, I had three months money. I had three months to make it work, right? And, um, and I, I thought, right, first things first, I need to get an office. So um, most people, most people, when you, when they're advising startups, they say, don't get an office, like bootstrap the cash. Don't, don't, yeah. don't get anything. I found a co-working space that had opened up uh, near, near my house. It literally, I was the first tenant, tenant number one. And, uh, and, and I, and I moved in there and, and it was, and that was probably one of the most important decisions I made from day one was because it felt like I was going to work. I could make it my own. Yeah. I bought some, I bought some lights on Amazon. <laughs> I bought, you know, just a green screen, and uh, yeah. I was like, right, I've got this space. I've got this office. I'm going to make something of this, and I'm going to just like record some content, and I'm just going to put it out there, and I'm going to start connecting with with my network. So I had three months, and um, and then, you know, first six weeks really hard work, just building building, building, building content, like content, um, you know, writing out uh, lo loads of sales outreach. Cause you know, again, I think another thing that people fail to do in the startup phase is they don't understand the importance of sales, right? Um, you know, you can spend lots of time making things look pretty, 
and you know getting the website right and building out your collateral and marketing activity and all that kind of stuff but unless you're actually speaking to people every single day you know you, you yeah. you're, not, you're not getting you're not getting noticed no one's no one's no one's paying attention no one's looking at no one's sitting no one's sitting around like generally waiting you know to, to to speak to you you've got to go to put yourself out there especially yeah. when you know you're still early days on your website and you you know you seo yeah, you're not getting any yet. traffic and yeah <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah, yeah so, people don't so, even know you exist <laughs> don't even know so you got so it was a lot of making people know exist and the good thing is um that there were a lot of online networking groups that were taking place at that time there's a lot right and um and i went to pretty much you know three four groups a day during this time wow and yeah. um and it was and and you know they were an hour at a time so it was a big investment and some of them they were in the states and i was i was logging on at one two o'clock in the morning just to see what the american market was like because we've got an american office now but like this was way before and um and 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 you know what that gave me that gave me the opportunity to practice the pitch right so you had yeah. you know usually in all of these networking groups you'd have 60 seconds basically to make that big impression and i just tried it all i tried different pitches all the time and i was just watching the room and seeing what was resonating with people um and then you know uh, you know taking what works and doing that with the clients that, that or the prospects that i was trying to target um and then you know six 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 weeks seven weeks in um, I got my first retained contract and I was like, this, okay, this is good. This is, I've got, a, I've got some money. I've got some money <laughs> yeah. now. I get, the, the, I, so I'm still on my own at this point. Um, you know, I can, I can, I can keep doing this and if nothing else, I can just work on this one client and I've got some yeah. cash, right? <laughs> I can actually feed myself and the family. Um, and so that buys a bit of time and then, you know, keep, tre keep testing. We keep testing. So I keep going to these networking groups and I keep testing new things. Um, of course, I've started to get testimonials at this point as well. So I can start talking about, you know, the testimonials that we've got mm. and um, and reasons why people should buy from us. So, you know, and that that starts working. And then, of course, when when I see it's resonating and I see it's working, then I go and put that back to the prospects and the clients that were that, that I'm talking to as well. And then we win the next deal and the next deal and the next deal. And then before you know it, you've kind of started building up this really nice, you know, retained these bits of revenue you're delivering people are happy it's good and then you start coming to the point where okay so now we need to start employing people so that we can yeah you know obviously service these continue to service clients um you know at, at, at pace and uh and and obviously do a really continue to do a really good job for them um and so started hiring the first the first couple of people into the business and um and then it snowballed really from there and then we got a first major retained contract um you know probably so seven seven or eight months after starting starting the business and that was the real game changer then because once we got our first real you know um you know uh you know but proper retainer if you like this is like um, one of our major clients now um then then of course you can make some proper strategic business decisions about yeah. how you're going to scale this business up moving forward and um and you know you can you, you can try you can try a few products and services out that perhaps you didn't offer at the time. So video was quite a big part for us. We it was very much yeah. focused on audio in the early days. You know, video now plays a hugely important part. You know, eighty percent of the productions we work on have a video element to them. We even have standalone video services um, that we offer as well um, that you know clients wouldn't have or, or ordinarily known about unless they'd use us for podcasting. Um, mm. So you know. It gave us options, but it's the hard work. It's the hard work, the perseverance, the graft. You know, it's the it's the getting on those getting on those calls when you'd rather be in bed. You know, in two o'clock in the morning to test things out in the U.S. That's the kind of thing that I think has led to where we're at today. Yeah, I'm a big believer in that. That actually, lots of people think it's going to be easy, and I think it's you know really important that actually the conversation is had with people starting a business that actually this is going to be a fantastic journey. But on it, there's going to be some ups and downs, you know, and, and in fact, quite often at the start, there's more downs than ups and they feel really personal because if you're starting that business, you're running it, it's, it's you. Um, and it, it, it almost feels like your, your brand, you know, you, you and the business are, are the one and 
it, it, it feels hard and it can hit you. Talk, talk me about any sort of setbacks or failures that you, yeah. you had and what you learned from them. Yeah. And I think you said something, uh, you know, really um, crucial there, which is, you know, you feel like it's your failure you take it personally and and let's face it in the beginning of any any uh brand journey you know you you, you are the brand really because you are out there on your own and people are buying into you you know you're making the first sales on your own um you know you're delivering generally on your own as well at that point and you know there is that kind of you know personal um you know, assurance that you want to make to that client to say, look, you know, I won't fail. You give me this opportunity, give me this opportunity. I'm going to, you know, grab it with both hands and I'm not, I'm going to do everything it takes to, to, to deliver, um, on this. And so, you know, I think, I think it is, it is, it is tough. Um, so I guess setbacks wise, um, you know, I, I, I opened New York, I opened New York back in November, 2021. And that's quite a significant date. And the reason is because that, you know, the US were quite late to open back up to um, yeah. foreign tourists. And November 2021 was when they, um, you know, was when they opened back up, basically. And we just won a piece of work that got us working on two major podcasts in the in the US. So two, two big clean energy podcasts in the US. And I was like, okay, this is great. So they're UK based, but they run these two big podcasts. And I was like, this is this is great. We're doing a really good job. And you know, this is absolutely the sector we want to be in. And you know, I want to be closer to I want to be closer to the hosts over there. I want to be closer to the market. So I think I'm just going to go and open a business. I think I'm just going to go and open an office in New York. <laughs> that was my thought process. So I, so I saw that I, I saw that the flights stayed back up, and I just booked a flight, and I just went there. And I went there, and I, I landed in you know one of my favorite parts of of New York, which is kind of the Soho area, the Tribeca area, you know, sort of the southern part of New York for those that know it. And um, and I turned up with no other objective other than just to meet the client, meet the presenters, meet the hosts, and you know yeah. some of the um, some of the people integral to the production that we were working on, um, and open an office. <laughs> that was it. And I I started you know I, I started just walking around looking for office space. And I found myself on on uh, on Hudson Street, and um, and for no other reason other than my son is called Hudson, my eight year old son now is called Hudson. I was like, wouldn't it be cool to have an office on Hudson Street? Because <laughs> it's the same. <laughs> so I started looking at, okay, where are these offices? Where's the offices? Where's the offices that I could get on Hudson Street? And I went and found uh, this office by Industrious, uh, who um, we're still there today. And it was perfect. It was perfect. It was just the perfect size, which is not very big at all, right? Because it didn't need no. anything too big. I just wanted that presence there. And I literally opened, I, I signed and I said, right, there's a two-year deal. We're just going to sign and I'm, I'm going to do it. It's two things there. You know, I really just backed, I just backed myself. I was like, yeah, you know, I'm just going to do it. And it's expensive. <laughs> it's expensive because it's New York City. All right. Um, and, uh, and, and I bought some furniture and I just literally spent like a few days and I just put the furniture, I put the sign on the door and I was like, right, we're, op we're open for business in New York. And then I was like, okay, I went, came home. I was like, oh, do you? told the teams, like, I've got this New York office now. It's great. Big fanfare. But it was still just an office. There was no one there, right? <laughs> other, than, other than me going backwards and forwards when I needed to. So I was like, okay, I need to hire someone. So I went back. I went back. I did a bit of a recruitment process, I think, on, on LinkedIn. I went back in January. I interviewed some people. And um, I didn't understand. I didn't understand the market, for one. I didn't understand how expensive anything was. Um, I didn't understand the people that well they, at, at that point. Certainly, you know, I've dealt with Americans throughout my career but i've never hired any uh, myself personally and i've never like you know had to deal with any of the legislation over there unemployment law or anything like that um so i hired someone and it was a very big costly mistake uh, because one i just didn't do any due diligence on this this person really i just had a you know again gut feel and yeah, uh, that, there's, there's a theme yeah. there's there's a theme there in the in the in the early days about the gut feel so i had this gut feel i was like yeah they seem good they're very outgoing um and i was like right i'm going to i'm going to hire them and um and it didn't work out it didn't it didn't work out and 
it didn't work out i think for a, for a couple of reasons one because i um I, I i i need i didn't i didn't find somebody with the right kind of motivation and get up and go to work um individually on their own without anyone else around them and it was mm. far easier not to go to the office that i just spent loads of money on and and uh, and opened up and was very proud of it was much easier to sit at home and you know be a bit lost in their cornflakes as i found yeah. when i phoned them up one morning uh, or one afternoon actually and it was still dressing gown and cornflakes um and um and, yeah you can see where this is going right and um and 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 also just didn't have the same drive motivation that that i have and that's mm. fine and i've come to realize that now is that no one is going to have the same drive motivation as you uh, as it's as it's as it's your own business and um and that's be, that's been that's been hard actually to realize you know because yeah. i used to because when i was employed i don't know about you matt but when i was employed you know i used to give a million percent and i actually thought and i uh, helped before uh, starting the podcast guys I had some pretty senior positions in these marketing agencies um you know and i would think i, w- I would not think twice about you know 100 hour weeks or whatever if i needed to and i used to think that i was working really really hard right but i tell you now you you, you do not work harder <laughs> there's always more to give because you do not work harder unless no. you've got your own thing um so yeah so that so uh, that that person that person lasted six weeks with us and then it was okay, kind of back to yeah. the but that's quite and a quick then- quick way of of changing it around why it was a mis- you know clearly a mistake actually six weeks solved moved on learned from that and then were you able to bring it back round yeah but it took a year right so it took a year to to get it right and and so so i i worked a lot slower then uh, at that point i was like right you know if i keep doing that and i keep making those gut decisions and without thinking it through too much Two, two things are going to happen. Like I'm just, well, I, first and foremost, we're going to run out of money, right? We're going to run out of money yeah. and uh, we're not going to be able to serve the business we've got because it's reckless. And, 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 and the other, and the other thing is we're just going to, we're going to lose direction. And, um, yeah. and, and so, so we, we moved a lot slower. So we absolutely serviced the, 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 the podcast that we had over there, um, which we could run from the UK, uh, pretty, pretty, pretty much and be over there when we need to. Um, but you know just take time to understand the market so i was there probably six or seven times during 2022 um going to as many networking events as i could meeting as many people as i could um you know in, just speaking to other people in our office over there I, I, you know there yeah. are, there are other like there are expats over there the people that have done it they've moved over to the states they've you know they've had a business in the uk they've gone to to the us and they've kind of you know um dealt with the trials and tribulations that, that brings so learning was so important um during that time so before we made our next hiring decisions there you know i probably took six six to seven months um, to figure out what it was we actually needed and then was much more specific with the brief um, when yeah. we took those people on. And it wasn't until 2023 when I was like, I don't know if this is going to work. You know, I don't know if, I don't, I don't know if the U S that, that New York office is going to work. Um, but you know, I'm going to give it another three months. <laughs> I'm going to give it another three months. And then, and then something, if it, it just, it just changed because of all the the due diligence, the hard work, the perseverance, because of all taking all those learnings and, you know, and translating that into conversations with prospects and clients, we start, it snowballed and we started to win, yeah. you know, a considerable amount of work in the U S um, in 2023. So early 2023, you know, we, we were, we were really rocking and rolling over there and you know last year was great you know so so yes we didn't really make money in 2022 but we learned a lot and then yeah. we made it back in 2023 which is great and then we've got lots more on the horizon for 2024 because it's such a great market to be in when you can be in it but you've got to understand it um yeah so i think be a little bit more strategic i guess with your decisions you know, I, I think I, I've I've been there where, you know, I'm a bit of a magpie, you know, this is a new idea and right, we're going to go with it and we're rolling with it. But actually, sometimes just slowing down and maybe understanding, you know, all the little intricate bits, um, which can yeah. be hard for people who are creative, 
I, I'm, I'm yeah. guessing here, if, if you, similar to me, actually, I'm very much, I jump in, I work, I just get on with it. Yeah. But actually, yeah. when, when you're growing a team and launching into different markets, being a little bit more strategic is probably the better way. Absolutely. And that is probably the biggest learning, you know, I've had uh, since starting the business is you, you, you know, you can't be too gung ho about these things, you know, really right. got to really got to just, you know, think and think and then think again. And the other thing that I did, um, which has truly been game changing, actually, is to hire a fractional CFO into the business um, who can, works yeah. with us two, two days, two days a month. And um, that has been one of the best decisions I've ever made because, you know, we work well together, you know, in the sense that I will always want to push onto the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. But what she will give me, and she the, the good thing is she doesn't always say no, right? She doesn't always say no, you can't. She says, let's figure out a way that we, we can we can do this. But she gives me the data. So yeah. so because if I'd have ran to her, if she was if she was around back in November 21 and I said I was gonna get on a plane and open an office in New York, she would have been like, No, you're crazy, you can't do that. It's ridiculous. We just don't have the, you know, don't have the I signed a two-year contract. What do you mean? <laughs> so, so so you know, but 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 if I do that, so so if if that situation was to happen again, let's say we wanted to open in I don't know Singapore or something like that, yeah. what what I could go there with now is I could go there with you know the data behind me and, and it will mm -hmm. clearly spell out you know this is the run rate this is how much we'd have to win to sustain it this is like the salary yeah. costs in that area this is everything you'd need to make a very very informed balanced decision and that for me is like what i um you know just needed uh at the, yeah. at the right time so she she came on board uh about this time last year um and so she's been with us a year now but yeah it really does does help with those financial strategic decisions yeah, definitely. There's a podcast that went out a couple of weeks ago, a guy called Scott, and his big thing, his big thing he gave, his big tip he gave was knowing your numbers. And I think that is really key because, again, as business owners, uh, certainly in the creative industries, we're very much focused on delivering some great outputs and it's shiny yeah. and it's nice and everyone's excited. But actually, you know, taking stock as to where you are. And I, I remember um, several years ago when uh, my accountant basically worked out and said, look, this is how much it costs you per day to run. And it was quite a scary figure. And I was yeah. like, oh, sorry, how much? You know, yeah. and, and I hadn't realized. And it had just crept up. And it wasn't just staffing costs, but every member of staff added, then we needed, you know, more licenses for Adobe and yeah, other bits of software and this and that yeah. and so on and so on. And before I realized, actually, the running costs were had crept not i wouldn't say out of control but but probably yeah. i wasn't aware and uh sure. it, but yeah it was quite a scary time to suddenly think oh okay you know if, if income stopped that is my what i'm committed to for for the next few months you know with with rent yeah. on the office and this and that so yeah, yeah knowing your numbers and really the other thing i would add to that is it's it, it's it's incredible how much subscriptions can get out of control um, mm. because it's very easy. And you might do this as well, particularly in the creative sector, because we're always bombarded with these you know, tools that are going to make life easier and whatever. And you might want to try them and stuff, and you might sign up for the free trial, but you put your credit card in, and then you forget about it. You know, one thing that um, our CFO is very good at doing is sending me a list of sub subscriptions every month. And it's amazing, you know, if we've not used them in three months, get rid of them, you know, they, yeah. they've got to go because that $20 here, $20 there, you know, it doesn't take long for that to start adding up and adding up. And before you know it, you've got 500 to to $1,000 worth of subscriptions. You know, I would, I would ask, you know, anyone really uh, that's in business and control of the numbers, like, just look at your subscriptions again, because yeah, yeah you'd be amazed how many you don't use probably. Yeah, very true. I did that actually when, when, um, yeah, the lockdowns first started, one of the things I did was review that. And it was amazing just going through and asking my team, is anyone using this at the moment? And um, people are like, yeah. oh, no, we haven't used that for months. We've moved on to this. And I'm like, well, hang on. What about that other bit that was in the middle? Oh, no, we're not using that anymore. And again, it was yeah. all those $20, 20 pounds, whatever. That In the grand scheme of things, you were thinking, oh, it's only 20 quid a month. But actually, we had loads that were built up. And yeah. as you know, not loads, but there, there was probably nearly £200 a month, you know, which yeah. over a year, yeah. you know, of course. over two Huge. grand, it's, it's, it's a lot of money that yeah. no one was using. Yeah. 
yeah you could better spend that couldn't you you could put it you put it on you know even google ads or something like that you know you're probably going to get more chance of uh of getting you know a lead out of something out of two grand so like yeah it's it's i'd always keep an eye on that it's important yeah Thank you for joining me today. I want to finish with just uh, one final question, which is anyone thinking of moving from maybe the corporate world or or just they're in, employed into starting a business? Uh, I know we've covered, you know, financials there, but what what big tip would you give to people thinking of starting up their own business? Well, the first one is just do it, right? Because I, I, I think um, there is so much benefit uh, by, you know, having your own your own business if you think you're you're ready for it but you've got to do it at the right time right so i started the business uh when i was 36 and i don't think and I, you know it's always been an ambition of mine it's always been something i've wanted to do i don't think i would have been ready until i was 36 um to to do it right and as much as i'd have loved to have done it when in my 20s i just don't think i would have been ready i really needed that experience throughout my corporate mm-hmm. career and also you know my fun creative weekend persona as well of like you know being that kind of radio dj and uh, and creating radio shows and stuff i needed yeah. all that experience in order to set me in good stead um to to start but then when you've when you've made that decision to yourself just start it seriously and and do whatever you need to do in order to set you up with the best possible success so of course money is important you know i had three months i had three months to make it work and it's amazing yeah. how much that motivates you don't do it if you can't sustain yourself because then you're always going to be kind of what do i do do i do i do i focus on the business or do i look for another job what do i do what do i do i don't know what yeah. i do you need to be you need to be 100 percent focused and if you've got your your three months run rate money eat beans on toast for three months if you have to like cut out all those netflix subscriptions do what you got to do if you're serious about it you'll make it work but then you know within that three month period just focus a hundred percent and then as i said earlier test test it test what you're selling test what you're offering there are so many still online networking groups you could go to even in person networking groups you could go to a lot of them offer a free trial go to that test it speak to people you know you may even just find a client uh within there um and 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 just you know grow it organically you know and sustainably that's 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 always been my philosophy with this is you know i don't want to be in a position where i have to turn some you know turn around to somebody and say sorry we haven't got enough working for you anymore you know we're gonna to have to make you redundant i don't yeah. want to be in a position where i have to fold the business because you know we haven't got enough we haven't got enough work you know we you know just don't be in a rush like i was to hire someone in new york you know just just to t- <laughs> take it take yeah. a breath think about it like and just say is this is this right is this money well spent you know is this going to contribute to the long-term long-term success um and you know that is my biggest learning actually is just take a breath take a breath and and figure it out but in the early days like don't take any breaths just go go for it (laughs) and just do try and do as much as you can on your own but do it on your own like you know sell it deliver it you know um you know get the feedback uh, and 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 that's you'll just learn so much yeah, no, I completely agree. Dan, thank you so much for joining me You're today. Welcome. It's been an absolute pleasure to have you on the show and enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks so much, Matt. Great to be here. Thanks again. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of the Balance Ambition podcast. I genuinely hope the stories inspire you as much as they inspire me. If you found value in today's conversation, please share it with a friend. And remember, by subscribing, you won't miss an episode and it would truly mean the world to me. Stay balanced and I'll see you next time.